Hello, my name is Alexandra Broner and I am recording. This is a video of my representation review. So I'm going to talk about my the show I chose, how I chose it, um, why I chose it, what is it about, some quick background information on it, and then just how how it illustrates diversity and diversity in the workplace. So we'll just hop right into it. And the show that I'm reviewing is Abbott Elementary. And I think it's um, a pretty well-known show. It was started in 2021, so it's very new. There's only one season now. And it was created and written by Quinta Brunson, who also plays one of the main characters, which is very cool. And she is a black female. And when choosing when i first heard of this project and i knew that we had to review some type of media some type of movie or tv show i quickly started thinking about the tv shows i've recently watched or what my favorites were and i thought about brooklyn 99 and that has great diversity and great diversity in the workplace there's something about it i was just like no and then i love scrubs and that doesn't have the most diversity ever and i really wanted to find a show that just like did a fantastic job of illustrating diversity and it was kind of a no-brainer but i chose abbott elementary and it's an incredibly diverse show it's a very accurate show it's a comedy so you learn a lot but then you laugh at the same time so i think that's phenomenal um and then yeah so uh some quick information about abbott elementary that it is styled as a mockumentary so i don't know if you've ever seen the office or modern family but it's styled the same way so basically a mockumentary so it's like a fake documentary so obviously it's fictional and descriptive but the show is set up in the way that the characters break the fourth wall they'll speak straight to the camera they uh, will look at the camera they'll have confessionals where they talk to the camera by themselves so it's cool I think that was a really great idea because it just like kind of makes the show look real like in some this sounds dramatic but in some scenes i'm just like oh my god this seems like they literally just took this like they just walked to it walked into a school and then just filmed this so i like the mockumentary style it makes you feel closer to the characters it just makes everything feel a bit more authentic and real and i just think it was a great choice so abbott elementary the show is set in philadelphia at an elementary school and the elementary school is called willard r abbott elementary school and it's a predominantly black school in a urban area and the plot is centered around an elementary school and its teachers. The school is severely underfunded and the, te the teachers lack support from their principals and their just community as a whole. They lack funds, other teachers, resources, just kind of everything. Like the lights go out in the hallway, they don't have paper, they don't have pencils, they don't have scissors, they don't like, I don't know. And again, these are all issues that, I'm sorry, but go walk into any public school today and I think a lot of teachers probably have the same struggle. So this is not far from the truth, even though it is um, scripted and fictional. But it is obvious from the first five seconds of the show that the teachers work because they love to teach, not because they're getting paid and obviously I feel like we most, I already explained that the school is underfunded, but we also know that teachers sadly are very underpaid for how much they do, and it's just obvious from the get-go that these teachers are just there for the student. It's really just not even for themselves, which I think is wonderful. And then so the characters, so this is like the good part, this is the part about Abba Elementary that's perfect for this project is because it's an incredibly diverse cast. Um, the main cast is quite diverse, like in the teachers are like I said what it's centered around and all the teachers are, majority are minorities, majority are people of color. So the black teachers are Janine Teagues, Gregory Eddy, and Barbara Howard. And then there are two white teachers who are the main cast, and that is Melissa Schmetti and Jacob Hill, and Jacob is gay. And then the principal is a black woman named Ava. So I just like, from the beginning, from the first scene, when you look at the main cast, it's incredibly diverse. And I, like I said, there's the majority of the characters are black, but then I also like that they include like a gay character. So I think it's just like really refreshing a great reflection of what the ideal workplace should look like and what it should be made up of and this is just I don't know and again this isn't the focus of this show which I think is even better this is just how it is and that's why I think people should learn from this is that this is what a normal what ideally the workforce should look like So moving forward, I want to talk about how the minority characters are portrayed on this show. 
So the minority characters, in my opinion, and from the research that I did, how a lot of other people feel is that the minority characters are portrayed as caring, intellectual, compassionate, and selfless. So starting off with Janine T. So Janine is played by Quinta Brown, who is the creator of the show, and she is the protagonist, and she is a positive teacher whose purpose is very much just helping students' lives. She, this is her second year teaching and her second year at Abbott Elementary, so she's very much an amateur still. She's a novice. She's very naive. She, as much as she thinks that she knows everything, she's still very new to the game, which is cool to watch, but she's constantly going out of her way to enhance the lives of her students inside and outside of school. And I feel like there's there's always a Janine in the workforce. And I think I'm a little bit of a Janine, but that there's, she's just very peppy. She's very spirited. She's very passionate. She's loud. She's very helpful. She's a little bit in your face. She's nonstop. She's energetic. And she just like is very good for morale. So I think like for a workforce, there always need to be someone like Janine, who's just like there to pump everyone up, there for a laugh, there to support you, there to help you. And granted, sometimes they get even a little bit annoying, but to have that person there who's constantly just like, yes, let's do this. Let's go. Happy morning. Happy Monday. Let's get into it. I think it's just really good to just like for employee engagement and um, satisfaction, I think. So I think that's cool. And again, Janine's the type of person that she'll just do anything for her students. She wants she and you'll see this in almost every episode of Abbott Elementary is that if Janine puts her mind to it, she is going to accomplish it. And again, like I said, Janine is a black teacher. And I think that's so great to show how hardworking a black individual can be because I feel like that's sometimes not always portrayed on TV. So I think that's really great of what Abbott Elementary does. So then moving on to Gregory Eddy, who Greg, Gregory Eddy, <laughs> he's the black male teacher and he's very chill, but very sweet. He's very put together and educated. He actually went to school to be a principal. And when I think of Gregory and how he is in the workplace, I think he's very qualified, very grounded, um, subtly fun. He's like kind of not in your face, which I think is cool, but he gets the job done and everyone loves him. The students really love him. Like I said, the majority of the students are black. So I think it's not very common to have a black teacher and I'll get into this later, but I think the students even love him more because he's just a great role model for the kids. And I think that's like a really important person to have in the workforce as well is someone that is um, reliable, dependable, kind, qualified. And again, it's really great to have a black person portrayed as that because again, not all TV shows um, characterize a black person that way. So moving on to Barbara Howard, she is a religious kindergarten teacher. She is stern yet warm. She is a role model for Janine. Barbara is sophisticated and well-spoken. She's grounded. She's confident. She's secure. She's wise. And she's, and a huge reason she's all those things is because she's been a teacher for a very long time. She's one of the veteran teachers. Um, and she just knows what she's doing. And she's very secure in herself and in her craft, her teaching skills, which I think is fun to see. And her main goal for her students is making them feel smart, seen, and she never ever wants them to feel less than. And I think Barbara's character is probably my absolute favorite character on the show just because, and to relate this to the workforce, Barbara's character on the show is the warm, maternal, caring, selfless, kind woman. She is that person at your job that you've had a bad day, you're doubting yourself, you're confused, you have questions, you're lost. She's that person you turn to and you just, she's your rock. She, she is, um, she's the person you turn to like at your lowest times and she's the one that's going to lift you up and make you feel confident in your abilities and remind you of why you're there and that you belong and that you're valued. And it's obvious in the show that whenever Janine, like I said, Janine, she's very much a role model for Janine and whenever Janine's feeling sad when she's feeling lost when she's feeling doubtful when she's feeling not noticed and alone Barbara's the one that will walk on over how are you Janine like what's going on how was that parent teacher conference with that one child like how are you doing blah blah, blah. and you just like watch you just watch the life re-enter Janine and I think <coughs> excuse me 
for Barbara, it's just there always needs to be a character, needs to be a person like Barbara in the workforce. I know I can't survive without it. To know that there's always someone to turn to, it could be male or female, but someone you can turn to and just be like, oh my gosh, I. I, I don't know how to do, I, I'm just feeling very lost and sad and confused. To the other person be like, you've got this, you're okay. I believe in you, I've gone through what you've gone through, you're gonna be fine, don't worry, let me help you. Let me, and to have someone that has that experience and wisdom, I just, a lot more people I think would feel more comfortable and safe at work if there are more people like Barbara out there. And the fact that she's also portrayed by a black woman is even better because it just shows the value and the need for people like her, especially like, black women like her in the workforce um so yeah so moving on ava coleman she is the female black principal and she became principal by blackmailing the superintendent she is not qualified to be the principal and is constantly wasting school funds she is constantly making fun of janine or jacob and is always making sexual remarks towards greg but even though she is selfish and insensitive, she has started to show compassion towards the teachers and students. And it's interesting. I'm not sure if a lot of people would feel this way when it comes to Ava. Granted, I also think Ava's the funniest character on the show. It's interesting because even though she is not qualified, she's selfish, she's self-involved, she can be mean, I don't see her as the villain of the show. And... I think that's a good lesson to be learned like when you have a boss like this because I feel like a lot of people can relate to this type of boss. I want that just like, I don't know, you just don't really click with, they seem kind of rude, they seem self-involved, all this stuff. But through Ava you can see how like yes you can have a boss like that and they can act like that but you'll have those moments where they'll show this other side of them, this compassion, this, this human side almost where you just go. I get it. I see it. It's not personal. It's not that they don't like me. It's nothing like that. They believe in me. So I think Ava, for all those not well-received bosses out there, she gives them hope for being seen a different way, which I think is cool. And I also think that a great, other great part about Ava is that even though she's not great at her job, I think it's wonderful that Abbott's elementary principal is a black female. Um, again, that is not something you see often in tv shows or movies i just think that's a really good message to anyone it's just like yeah she may not be the best at her job but it's really great to see that they that she's just like a back black female in charge so to have two and one like a bogo i think that's wonderful um and then i wanted to include he's not black but i wanted to include jacob hill because he's a white gay teacher and i just think that's phenomenal because again it just shows like the range and diversity of this show like they have black people they have gay people they have people of different backgrounds and ages like the the diversity doesn't just stop with race which i think is really important and again is reflective of what a realistic workforce should look like again it should just be like white and black people it should have be to people different races sexual orientations backgrounds socioeconomic like all of that so i think that's what's that's why it's important to include jacob in that as well So, moving on to what messages does this send to the audience about diversity and diversity in the workforce. And I wanted to start off by talking about an article called How, Ab How Abbott Elementary Flips the Script on Popular Images of Urban Public Schools. And this was written by anthropologist Philip McKenzie, and he explains the significance of the show and the messages it sends to the audience. He starts off by discussing how happy he was to see a black teacher portrayed in the show. So he writes, Growing up in New York City in the 1980s, I did not have one black male teacher in, a, in elementary or junior high school. I was a 15-year-old junior at Brooklyn Technical High School when I encouraged my first black male te when I encountered my first black male teacher. A fond shout out to Mr. Brereton for building construction. After Mr. Brereton, I would have to wait until I was a freshman at Howard University to be taught by a black male again. To have academic instruction and guidance administered by someone who looks like you is all too rare for a black elementary students. Stanford's Graduate School of Education estimates that only 2% of America's teachers are black men. 
Inclusion of Gregory's character is brilliant. It is a hallmark of the type of cultural fluidity necessary to appeal to audiences and contexts that resonates. I am I am far removed from grade school, and seeing William's character week after week reflects an academic reality I wish I experienced growing up. And I absolutely loved what Mr. McKenzie had to say in this article. And to to take this quote of his and apply it to the workforce, I think this show is so important to take it back. This show is so important for Mr. McKenzie because it showed that there are black teachers and what a black teacher is like, a black male teacher and how important it is for students to see that that's an option. I think this show is important in the same sense that it shows young black children, older black individuals, that there are diverse workplaces where you can work with someone that's the same race as you. Because I'm assuming that there are some children out there who sadly, their family members are the only other black people that they know. When they watch this show, they can say, oh wow, like one day I can go work with someone who's also black. I can work with someone that's gay. I can work with someone. It just like, gives hope that if you're living in like a non-diverse area or you're working in a non-diverse office, the show gives hope that like that is the norm in other places, is this diversity, this um, colleagues of different backgrounds getting along really well, different sexual orientation. So I think that's what I got from this quote is that like as, reassur as reassuring it was for him to see it like that there are, no, there are now black male teachers. I think this is reassuring for a lot of individuals, uh, different ethnicities, even for like white people to be like, oh wow, like I can work in this setting. I can work with other people with other races. Like I think the show just like highlights that that is an option and that is normal. So moving on, Mackenzie explains that Abbott Elementary flips the script on common school shows. Instead of focusing on the lives of the students, Abbott Elementary focuses on the teachers and how they navigate the bureaucracy and pressures of the job. I totally agree with that and I thought it was really good that the, sh the show highlights all their struggles. Like even like the mundane ones like that they don't have appliances and they don't have like light bulbs for the hallways but they also highlight the, the bigger struggles of like lack of support from the community, from the government, from all that stuff. And what's great about highlighting those struggles is that it shows that a diverse workforce can handle all those things and succeed. I, um, for the people out there that work in a workforce that's only people, only straight people, only, only young people, only old people, they have a lack of perspective of realizing that you can be of different backgrounds and different races and still handle these like really tough situations and Abbott Elementary is showing audiences that yes these teachers face these like pretty harsh circumstances but they face them and succeed even more because they are from different backgrounds. It's not because they're all the same. So I think that's why it's important that they show the struggles of the teachers if that makes sense. I also, Mackenzie goes on to explain that he appreciates that Abbott Elementary doesn't focus a lot on the politics of things. Obviously, we live in a climate right now where <laughs> everything's political. Everyone has something to say. Everything is just like chaotic and dark and frightening. And Abbott Elementary does a great job of having a truly focus on the students and the school. And Mr. Mackenzie also points out that schools have become a battleground for political debate like parents have to come now and say well I don't want my child to learn about critical race theory I don't want my child to wear a mask I don't want this blah 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 but the show highlights how these parents focus more on their, the education of their children than just like kind of getting their way with things and having their opinion heard and he goes on to say, Abbott Elementary is not a political show, but by showing the children of black and brown parents not embroiled in the culture wars, Brunson and her team are performing a political act. And what I kind of got from this, and this maybe could be a stretch of what I was just kind of applying this point of view to the workforce is that I feel like some people, when they look at a diverse workforce, diverse workforce can easily translate to different political views and of course different political different political views can lead to immense conflict and a lot of debate and argument just things that just end up like uncomfortable and rude and just not fun but what's amazing about this show is that it really is 
politics free. Um, it shows audiences that you can be diverse and from different backgrounds and you can talk about other things besides politics. That like politics isn't like the unifying factor. It's not the only thing you can discuss, which I think is really great because there may be people out there who refrain from working with other races because they think that they're just, they're just not gonna agree on different viewpoints and things. And again, the show, Abbott Elementary just illustrates that again, you can put those things behind you and focus on the topic at hand and like work even better, if that makes sense. And then, so it's also explained that Abbott Elementary shows audience that even though Abbott Elementary is a public city, a city public school, the show doesn't allow the school to be stuck in the stereotype of what is a city school or reduce the setting to an inner city stereotype of the liberal imagination. Even though Abbott Elementary is depicted as a struggling school, the staff is more than capable and willing to meet them. And I thought, I thought this was a really good point just because again when you are comparing this to the workforce and like having a diverse workforce it's canceling out all the stereotypes of different minorities if that makes sense like again the show is illustrating that even though it's in a maybe not the best area of school maybe there's more black teachers than white is that the school is still running perfectly, not because of like the support they get, but because of the teachers, because of their black teachers, because of their diverse teachers. Even with, with what little they have, they're still giving a great education to these students. And it just like breaks down a lot of stereotypes. And again, that can be reflected on how like you can look diversity into the workforce. And it also shows that even though Abbott Elementary is depicted as a struggling school, the staff is more than capable and willing to conquer all the issues at the school and Mackenzie explains that Abbott Elementary's power lies in the fact that it knows the world it inhabits so authentically it can shape perceptions in a way that feels both familiar and fresh and again it just shows that a diverse workforce workforce can focus on the job at hand and not racism and how ne how necessary diversity is especially within a school and again I think what's really cool to see about this specific school and then reflect on the to the um, workforce is that yes the school is predominantly black and yes most of the, the teachers are minorities but there are still white teachers white teachers can work at a predominantly black school it doesn't make them any weaker at their job. It probably makes them better. And same with the reverse. Like, you can have, like, majority white students at a school, and there could be black teachers, and the teacher can still be phenomenal. So I think that's also what's important to show for the workforce is that, like, the target population for a company can be majority of one race, but you can still have workers of different backgrounds, if that makes sense. I don't know. That's just something that stuck out with me that I saw on the show is that, again... Abbott Elementary does a great job of showing how like it's just not centered about race. The norm is just working with whoever there is. And the color of your skin just really doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter in the sense that it's just like normal to work with that many people. I want to make that clear. So in an article titled What About Ale Abbott Elementary Gets Right About Black Teachers former teacher and principal Felton Moss had a lot to say. He says that this reminds that black teachers do more than teach, they change lives. He said, I've come to re recognize the significant role this comedy has in reminding us of black teachers' profound impact on all students, specifically black children. Abbott Elementary provides clear examples of how black teachers leverage culturally relevant practices and pedagogy daily to impact the lives of their students, both socially and academically. And I thought that was a really great point. It's something that I noticed in the show, but until like, I read this article and he like very much just like wrote that out, I was like, oh my God, yes, I totally saw that. So, so in other words, Abbott Elementary allows the different backgrounds of the teachers to help them, the different cultures to help, they allow them to bring it to work with them to enhance their the education of their students. In other words, it, it makes them a, a stronger employee 
and um for instance he's not even a teacher but Janine's Janine's boyfriend is an up-and-coming rapper and he is recruited by this organization to help educate students on why drugs are bad how to stay away from them what they are blah 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 and so he basically goes to Abbott Elementary and he like performs this rap song that's all about drugs and why you shouldn't do them why they're bad and it's wonderful the students love it they sing they dance but the best part is that they take away the message with with them and it sticks with them even more because they're singing they're singing how drugs are bad and all this stuff so it's really cool to see something that he took from his culture from his um, background and he used it to improve his education to the students which i thought was really cool and then another example of it is that janine starts a step club after after school and it's wonderful it brings her and the students together it brings her and the principal ava together it's something fun for them to do but also like enjoy and like learn about culture and again everyone just enjoyed it and it was a great thing that brought everyone together which i think was awesome so all in all, Abbott Elementary's message to audience is that black teachers obviously play a significant role in students' lives and that black teachers are able to push aside the chaos occurring in society and the harsh circumstances of schools and focus on creating a better life for their students. And to apply that to the workforce, it's showing that Minorities deal a lot deal with a lot on a day to day basis. Um, there's a lot of homophobia out there. There's a lot of racism out there. There's lots of sexism out there. There's a lot of ages. There's just a lot of discrimination out there. And this is for a lot of people. This is a day to day thing. But when you work in a respectful and a diverse place, you're able to put aside those traumas, those issues, the things you struggle with aside, and like do your job and again that has to do with the person and them being open and accepting but also has to do with the workforce that is supportive to their employees and that allows them to be themselves and allows them to feel comfortable in their own skin and reminds them that they value them but they also understand the point of diversity and the point of making them recognize that there are other people like them out there but that they're also that that's the norm that that's what they're company strives for that that's a priority for them and i think abbott elementary just just does a great job of showing how diverse workers that they want to could talk all day long about the discrimination the struggles that they go to through but that's not their identity they are great at their job they're even better than most at their job and i think abbott elementary does it serves as a great reminder for them So then, moving on to perceived accuracy of the depiction, um, from the research that I did, many people of different backgrounds, uh, people of color, and teachers give Abbott, Abbott Elementary an A plus for how well they depict the struggles of teachers, specifically black teachers, uh, in the workforce. They just do a great job of like being realistic with what they go through on a day-to-day -day basis and just like what topics of race are like in the workforce, what general generational gaps are like. So I wanted to go into those two things like kind of a bit more in depth. So starting off with generational gaps. So as said before, Barbara and Melissa are the veteran teachers who have immense experience. They've been teaching at Abbott Elementary for many, many years. They know what they're talking about. They aren't really surprised by anything. Um, again, that's just experience. And then Gregory and Janine and Jacob are all new teachers. So yes, this is like their first and second year. They're just, <laughs> they've got, they're very naive in it. Um, they have a lot to learn. So together, they must all navigate a new way, to new way of communication that works for all generations. But besides communication, in an article titled Abbott Elementary Returns with Lessons for Our Own Workplace, author Michelle Pang explains how the show accurately depicts the concept of sponsorship in the workplace. So, the article explains that in Barbara, Janine sees someone who can not 
who can not only help her grow as a teacher but can also advocate on behalf of her and her students. In other words, she's looking for a sponsor. Samantha Ross Saperstein, head of Woman on the Move at J.P. Morgan Chase, has defined sponsors as strong, consistent advocate for others. In her piece for Charter and Time, she adds, they pound the table for people behind closed doors and protect them when they take risks. Over the course of the first season, we see Barbara and another veteran teacher, Melissa, played by Lisa and Walter, step into sponsorship roles for Janine and other young teachers. For the newer teachers, having the older peers as sponsors changes what is possible for them, whether it's defending them against the principal or taking on new projects at school. And I just really liked that this explanation of sponsorship is specifically at Abbott Elementary because it highlights why general, generational diversity and just a range of ages in a workforce is incredibly important for the success of all employees um, because if Janine didn't have Barbara, Janine would feel lost, confused, unsupported. Um, she would dislike where she were. She wouldn't feel like she had a place there. She wouldn't feel valued. But because of this older woman that has experience that who sees her and values her, Janine is happy to work where she goes and she's happy to go there every day. So I think that's what the different generations in the workplace does. Because granted, I think we all can agree that a difference in age in the workplace can sound kind of like a little bit of a recipe for disaster. It just sounds like different communication styles, different leadership styles, different management styles. And I don't know, Abbott Elementary does a really great job at showing how they can learn from each other. Through Janine, Barbara now understands how different ways to use technology, different ways to communicate, different ways to appeal to her students but through through Barbara Janine is able to see is able to learn how to be a teacher long term without burning out for and being able to keep that love that she has and not lose it and not have it sucked out of her because of all the struggles that she faces as a teacher so I think that's really important it's like the mentorship I guess is another word for sponsorship and it just makes it clear how both ages are really needed for the success that diversity is really important I also think again it just like to see like these two black women help each other and be a role model for each other is incredibly impactful for viewers just to witness that and see what it's like when two people two women support each other and help each other out it's just like it's a recipe for success for sure the accurate depiction of sponsors in the workplace shows how experienced employees should look out for and advocate and mentor the new and younger employees and this increase in teamwork allows the new employees to become stronger so yes Abbott Elementary event, of course once again illustrates how important it is to push these different ages together how important mentorship is mentorship gives information that training and orientation will never be able to give to new employees and it just like gives wisdom and security to new people in a place that can be very uncomfortable and daunting at first Besides sponsorship, Abbott Elementary shows how different generations handle problems. The older teachers, Barbara and Melissa, have developed a, you, developed a you can't fight city hall attitude and are proud of the results they achieve by working with what they have. As Barbara says in one episode, she does not want the children thinking about what they don't have. Janine, however, believes that there is always a way to get what the school needs. So again, we're going to see a difference in how different ages and generations handle certain situations. So. Let me paint a picture. So this is in episode three, and episode three is all about the teacher wish list week. So basically, basically, this is a week where all the teachers write a list of all the supplies that they need in their classrooms, and hopefully, people in the community will come and donate some of them. So it can be like pencils, paper, scissors, stickers, markers, stuff like that. And Janine fills hers out, and couple of days go by and she receives no donation so she's just like okay that's fine I'm getting these supplies one way or another so she she created a TikTok with Ava and the TikTok goes viral and the TikTok is asking people in the community to donate for the children it's for the youth it's for education stuff like that and a lot of people show up and donate a lot for Janine so Janine is in the teacher's lounge with all the other teachers and she's excited she's so happy that it works she's happy for her students she's happy that her ambition paid off blah 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 and she sees that Barbara has submitted her list but she also has not received any donations so she extends 
an offer to Barbara to make her a video so she can also receive the same amount of donations that Janine gets. And Barbara is just like, no, it's fine. I'll make do with what I have. I'm okay. No. Well, you know, I can relate to Janine on this level because it is out of the goodness of our heart. And I do think a lot of people out in our generation tend to do this is that Janine doesn't listen to Barbara. She just goes ahead and she's like, no, I'm gonna help her and I need to and she needs my help and blah, 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 blah. Even though, again, Barbara said no. And Janine goes ahead and makes another video this time for Barbara so she receives donations and it kind of backfires the video is not good it depicts Barbara as this old lady with sad children it's a very much of a pity thing and basically the lesson here is that you see the two ages you see Janine who just wants the best it's gonna get the best no matter what she's gonna get it but then you see Barbara and yes she may not have all the donations but what Janine doesn't understand is the the message, the meaning. Bra Barbara's okay making do with what she has because that is a lesson to her students that they are not less than, that they are not missing out, that they are not impoverished, that they are not privileged. She is showing her students that they have everything they need because they're already wonderful and talented. They're not missing out. And I think to me that was so monumental because again, it just shows the experience and difference in age between the two because I can see where Janine's coming from. I can see be like, but my children want this. I know. Barbara's children want this like this is the best thing like this is great this is great I'm doing I'm doing a good thing I'm doing a good thing but she never took this time to take like 14 steps back and be like but what message does this send by freaking out over the things I don't have and then dying and killing myself into then getting those things and again it shows with age that Barbara Barbara realizes the message of freaking out over what you don't have and what it shows her students and that's why she's not fighting for it so I just thought that was really um amazing and even in that episode you can hear janine say that barbara comes to the generation that does not ask for what she needs and again it just like is such an example of not listening to barbara but also just not even taking the time to understand where barbara's coming from and i think this is a really great lesson to an audience that i think different ages in a workforce can most definitely get can work cohesively and be successful but to get there you do have to be pretty open and very forthcoming with your communication just because i hate to say the other age or generation really may have no idea where you're coming from so you have to be clear with why you do or say certain things like barbara should have just made it clear why she felt that way to janine and i think janine would have understood but again she needed to express that but again, that just shows the different ages and how it, it it's it can lead to some maybe some miscommunication. But again, be, knowing that you do have to be clear. But yes, and besides that, Abbott Elementary does a great job at depicting the interactions between diverse coworkers. So in, in an article called Abbott Elementary on ABC Comedy: The Tragedy of public education it explains that jacob who is white is the only character in the show who regularly refers to race in his nervous efforts to be a liberal ally in fact it is in it, in fact in its treatment of jacob's wokeness abbott elementary refreshingly mocks the suffocating trend of racialism in american culture i thought this was fantastic i again noticed this when i watched the show but it wasn't until i read this article that i was like I think every person can relate to this. I think every person of color can relate to this. I think every person, every white person that thinks they understand race can relate to this. There's, I don't know why, maybe it's to like prove something, but when there's a diverse group of people that consists of people with different backgrounds, the white person, the white person from the majority tends to overcompensate of how much of an ally they are they just want to make it clear in every conversation that they are an ally they understand they're not racist they are liberal they just like always want to make it clear and it's somewhat out of the goodness of their heart and poor jacob is at fault for doing this but again there's such an adverse effect in the sense that like a black person may not want to talk about race all day and if they do they should bring it up on their own terms it shouldn't be this white person bringing it up even if it's good especially not if it's bad and i think like there's even a scene where jacob is talking about his time in the peace corps and working in africa and janine literally stops it and it's just like no 
what did we say about you always talking about your time in Africa? And it's wonderful because then it shows Jacob like, hey, it's okay. Like, we understand, like you care, that's fine. But like, it doesn't need to be spoken about every time. But also I think it's a great message too that it shows I hope it shows audiences that you can do what Janine did, which was stop, kind of call out um, Jacob in a fine way. Like, it wasn't in a mean way. She's just like, hey, like, please, like, we told you to stop talking about that. It just shows that, like, you can stop that weird behavior and prevent it from occurring, and it doesn't really hurt anyone's feelings, and it's okay. It's appropriate. So I think those were just two good lessons. And again, I feel like we've all witnessed someone do that, where, again, it comes from the goodness of their heart. They just want to explain how they're kind of an ally, but that that's just pointing out race more when it's already should be a normal thing it already should it shouldn't be defining anyone and so I do think it needs to be a little bit nipped in the bud and I think the way Janine handles it is really well and as for the depiction of policies and laws from what I've noticed in the show I don't think there's much talk about policies and laws when it comes to like diversity in the workplace if anything I think it shows that at Ab Abbott Elementary, regardless of what race or sexual orientation or background they come from, you are um, have an equal chance to any job. Like, for instance, what I said about being principal, like it made it clear that you can be black or a woman and you can still get the job. I think Abbott Elementary does a great job of showing that. That um, Even like the superintendent of the community is a black male. So it makes it clear that any job position is available for any person from any background, which I think is really great. And it's just like a nice message then, again, to people in the workforce and audiences that an ideal workplace is equal and fair to every person. So I'm hoping there's people at home watching this and being a black girl's watching this be like, oh my gosh, I could be a principal at a school. She's a principal on TV. I could do that, I've never seen that before. That's amazing, I love that. Or you can see like, be a young black boy and be like, oh my gosh, that's a black male teacher. I've never had one, so great, maybe I'll have one in the future. And B, maybe I could be one myself. It's just showing people what the workforce is capable of and how it can be, still be successful, if that makes sense. So that's what's great about Abbott Elementary. To wrap it up, it gives people hope for a workforce that may be more conducive for them, that may be more comfortable for them, but it also shows people what a normal workforce should look like. It's not, it can be diverse and not centered about race. It doesn't always have to be talking about politics. It always does, it doesn't always have to have conversations that separate people more than bring them together. It can just be about the job at work and for Appa Elementary it's the students and they do a phenomenal job of being teachers and showing that a black teacher is phenomenal, a black um, a black female teacher is phenomenal. It just does a great job of showing that race shouldn't define you in these settings and that, I don't know, a, diver a diverse workforce is stronger than a non-diverse one. So I hope I made it clear the way diversity is shown in this show and how it just shows what a great workforce can be when it's diverse. And I absolutely love this show and I think it deserves all the praise in the world. That I just think it's really sending a wonderful message to all people. And yes, I hope you watch it soon and I hope you enjoy it as well. <laughs>